Hello and welcome. Today we're going to be looking at the job changes for 6.0 with Final Fantasy 14 Endwalker. We're going to be starting with the Paladin, uh, but one thing that I need everybody to remember is potencies are subject to change. Potencies can be changed very quickly. Jobs that we look at today can be changed before two weeks are up. Uh, and another thing to remember is that because of the stat squish, numbers have changed as well. Potency changes, we don't actually know exactly how much it's going to make of a difference, uh, but theoretically it shouldn't change too much at all. So uh, big potency jumps are still big potency jumps. Little potency changes are still little potency changes. But keep in mind that everything will feel different once you have the game in your hand. So just keep that in mind as we go through Paladin today. Our first big change is that Riot Blade has had potency change from 100 to 170, which is a nice little bump uh, for your main combo. I'm curious what that's going to look like when we get into uh, Royal Authority, but we'll get there in a little bit. Uh, Total Clips had a little bit of a drop. Potency's been dropped from 120 to 100. Not too bad still, though. Uh, Shield Bash, potency's been changed from 110 to 100. Again, expect a lot of these little potency changes that don't affect too much. Uh, Shield Lob's range has gone from 15 to 20. And the potency's been changed from 120 to 100. Rage of Alone, uh, from your Riot Blade into... Fast Blade, Right Blade into Rage of Clone, which again, I'm really interested in how that's going to affect Royal Authority. Uh, potency has been dropped from 350 to 330. I'm assuming Royal Authority is also going to have a nice little drop, but we'll find out. Uh, and then Spirits Within, uh, potency has been changed from 100 to 250, which is a pretty drastic jump. Uh, however, it no longer has the potency increases up to 370 as own HP nears maximum, and now instead just restores MP. So now it's just free damage. Just do it. Don't worry about your HP. Just do it. Uh, prominence, the combo potency has been dropped from 220 to 170. Eh, you know, again, Circle of Scorn. Potency has been changed from 120 to 100. Uh, potency for damage over time has been changed from 35 to 30. And the recast time has been changed from 25 to 30 seconds. That's just basically a flat nerf in every way. Uh, you're going to be doing less damage, and it's going to take longer for you to be able to use it again. But now it's on that 30-second window, that, that rotation. So it'll line up with a couple more things better. So we'll see. I think this will be better for it in the long run, but it does kind of it does kind of suck a little bit. Goring Blade. Goring Blade's changes are combo potency has changed from 390 to 250. Potency over time has dropped from 85 to 65. Uh, but it's added damage over time effect cannot be stacked with that of Blade of Valor. Again, just basically a flat nerf, but I feel like the stuff that Paladin is going to get later on is going to make up for it uh, as we go through that. Divine Veil has added the additional effect restores target HP, which is great. You can now use Divine Veil as a uh, heal, a cure potency of 400, which is very, very nice. Then we have Clemency. <clears throat> cure potency has changed from 1,200 to 1,000. So, you know, not bad, but a little bit of a drop, but you're going to have Divine Veil as well to be able to use that doesn't. It's an OGCD that doesn't require a cast time, so you're just going to have that for free. Why not use it, you know? It'll make up for it. Royal Authority potency has changed from 1 to 130. Combo potency from 550 to 420. And the duration has changed from 15 seconds to 30 seconds on Sword Oath. So it is still a little drop with Royal Authority, but you get longer Sword Oath stacks. So what can you do? Intervention is next. And they've changed increases damage reduction by another 50% of the effect of Rampart or Sentinel, if either are active, to increases damage reduction by an additional 10%. If Rampart or Sentinel are active, uh, which is a pretty substantial change, but they've also added it grants Knight's Resolve to target, which reduces damage taken by 10% for four seconds, and grants Knight Benediction to target, which gradually restores HP with a cure potency of 250 for 12 seconds, which means Intervention is now a much better cooldown, even if it doesn't have as much blocking. You're doing way more, you're helping the party way more. It is a better cooldown. Uh, and I like this change, I like it a lot. Holy Spirit, potency dropped from 350 to 270. It added Requiescat potency 540. Uh, added additional effect restores own HP and cure potency 400. And the MP cost has been changed from 2000 to 100. Or 2000, 100. Oof, man, you can just cast those forever. So you're going to be restoring your own HP more. You're going to be healing more. And you're still going to be doing pretty decent damage. Although Requ Requiescat potency is quite, quite a bit higher. 540, that's pretty great. Requiescat itself, potency has been changed from 150 to 400, 
<clears throat> duration changed from 12 seconds to 30 seconds. It's removed. The potency increases up to 550 as MP nears maximum. And instead, as an additional effect, increases attack magic and healing magic potency by 50% if current MP is at 80% or higher and allows spells to be cast immediately to it change that one to additional effect, receive five stacks of Requiescat. Added the Requiescat effect, increases the potency of Holy Spirit and Holy Circle. Spells will no longer require cast times. This is a big change that I think is just a flat gain to Paladin. Uh, you no longer have to worry about trying to have high MP so that you can hit that good Confidior number. You just get stacks of Requiescat now that allow you to cast Holy Spirit and Holy Circle for free, pretty much. You start to pay the MP cost, but you get them with no cast time, and it increases their, their potency. Requiescat now hits way harder on a 60-second time. It's very, very good. I like it a lot. Holy Circle's change. Uh, potency's dropped, of course, because when you're able to get the free ones like that, oof. Potency changed from 250 to 130. Uh, it added the Requiescat potency when you have Requiescat stacks to 300, and it restores own HP and cure potency 400, and MP cost has been halved. Paladin's going to be really good with the magical attacks now. It's going to hit hard, especially with Requiescat on a 60-second timer. Uh, intervene potency has been changed from 200 to 150 and the range has changed from 15 to 20. So you have a wider range to be able to use your gap closer on atonement. Potency has been changed from 550 to 420 because of course it has to be because you're hitting way harder with everything else. And then confidier potency has changed from 800 to 900 added action changes to blade of faith upon execution. And the MP cost has been halved. So now Confidier hits even harder. Yes, I'm, I'm fine with this. This is good. Uh, you also have new Holy Sheltron. It's a level 82 ability. It blocks incoming attacks. Uh, instant cast. Duration is 8 seconds. Uh, it grants Knight's Resolve, which reduces damage taken by 15%, and Knight's Benediction, which gradually restores HP with a cure potency of 250 on a duration of 12 seconds, and costs 50 Oath. Very, very good. This is a great upgrade to Sheltron, as it were. Um, the 8-second block is decent, but everything else about this is amazing. You know? I love this. Especially if you use it at the right time and can take advantage of that 4 seconds of 15% uh, reduction. Very, very good. Uh, expiation? I'm assuming that's how we... Expiation, maybe? Uh, it's an instant cast, 30-second recast. Delivers an attack to target and all enemies nearby it with a potency of 300 for the first enemy and 50% less for all remaining enemies and restores HP. Or MP, not HP. So this is just a flat, hey, let's hit everything every 30 seconds. It's like Spirits Within, but half the time and it hits everything. Uh, but it does have fall off. Blade of Faith deals unexpected damage to target and all enemies nearby it with a potency of 250 for the first enemy and 50% less for all remaining enemies. Combos off of Confidior and restores MP. Confidior turns into Blade of Faith uh, when you use it now, uh, which means that, which is very cool, uh, action changes to Blade of Faith upon execution, and then you can use Blade of Faith for that 250 potency to all enemies around you. Then it turns into Blade of Truth, deals unexpected damage to target and all enemies nearby it with a potency of 350 for the first enemy, 50% less for all remaining enemies, and also restores MP, and then Blade of Valor deals unexpected damage to target and all enemies to buy it with a potency of 420 for the first enemy and 50% less for all remaining enemies, which combos, restores MP, has a damage over time with 80 for the first enemy and 50% 50 less, 50 less for all remaining enemies for a duration of 21 seconds, but you can't stack that with Goring Blade. This is very good. Because you can use Confidior uh, very often, and then you get to use, so your your rotation, right? Your rotation is going to be Requiescat, Holy Spirit, Holy Circle, depending on what you're fighting, and then Confidior, Blade of Faith, Blade of Truth, Blade of Valor. And it's going to be great. That's going to feel so good to do. That is a great AoE combo that still has really good single target damage, and there's no reason not to use it on single target. Paladin's going to feel really good. Uh, traits have been updated a little bit here. We get uh, some new truff because, of course, we do. Uh, Sheltron Mastery upgrades Sheltron to Holy Sheltron. Enhanced Intervention extends the duration of Intervention to 8 seconds and grants the extra stuff that we talked about earlier. Divine Magic Mastery adds a healing effect to Holy Spirit and Holy Circle. You get that at 84. Melee Mastery, also at 84, increases the potency of Fast Blade to 200, Riot Blade to 170, Royal Authority to 130, and Holy Spirit to 270, and Atonement to 420. 
So Spirits Within becomes Expansion. Okay, that makes a lot more sense at 86. And then Enhanced Divine Veil gives you the healing potency to Divine Veil. So very, very good. Boom, 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 boom. Boom, 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 boom. Very nice. Yeah, Paladin is looking very, very good. I'm excited for Paladin. Up next is Warrior. Warrior, of course, will also have... All of these are going to have a lot of changes, so please be ready for it. Uh, Warrior's Maim, potency change from 100 to 130. Combo potency change from 320 to 280. Regular potency on Maim goes up. Combo potency is reduced a little bit. I'm sure we'll make up for that in other places. Uh, Berserk has been completely changed. Recast time has been changed from 90 to 60 seconds. You now get three stacks of Berserk. Each stack guaranteeing a weapon skill attack is a critical and a direct hit. Duration for 15 seconds. An additional effect extends Surging Tempest duration by 10 seconds to a maximum of 60 seconds. Berserk is nuts now. It just is free direct hit crits. You just get them. Overpower, uh, potency got dropped to 111. Or 111, 110. Tomahawk, just like <coughs> just like uh, Shield Throw, it's now uh, range 15 to 20, and instead uh, it's lower potency for it, 100 potency. Storm's Path had its potency changed to 120, but the combo potency dropped by 20, which should balance out completely, and you should notice no difference. Uh, Inner Beast, uh, potency's been dropped by 20, but again, not a huge, not a huge thing. Mithril Tempest has been completely revamped. Uh, delivers an attack with a potency of 100 to all nearby enemies. Combos off of overpower. Uh, combo potency is 150. It grants Surging Tempest, increasing damage dealt by 10% for a duration of 30 seconds. Extends Surging Tempest duration by 30 seconds to a maximum of 60 seconds if you use it twice. And the combo bonus is that it increases your peace gauge by 20, which is very nice. Home Gang duration changed from 8 seconds to 10 seconds. Home Gang is uh, now maybe one of the best combos in the game, or one of the best cooldowns in the game. Everybody else, this is not that good. Homecoming, uh, homecoming, home gang is uh, very, very good. Steel Cyclone potencies dropped from 220 to 170. Storm's Eye has been completely revamped as well. Uh, potency of 120 combos off of Maim. 400 potency grants surging tempest, increasing damage dealt by 10 percent, and for 30 seconds. And of course, if you use it again, it extends surging tempest to 60 seconds and increases your beach gaze by 10. So you have surging tempest uh, off of both Mitchell Tempest and Storm's Eye, which is a good way to do it, I think. Spell Cleave! Potency has been changed from 590 to 460. I know this feels bad. I know this doesn't feel good. I know you look at this Warrior Mains and you go, Spell Cleave is ruined! But remember that now with Berserk, you get three direct hit crits. If they didn't drop it, Spell Cleave would become insane. Uh, raw Intuition. Potency changed from 20% to 10%. Added additional effect restores HP with each weapon skill successfully delivered. And your potency 400, which is Bloodbath, basically. So it's great. Uh, Bloodbath's finally back. It's just now it's raw intuition. Equilibrium added effect gradually restore HP. Cure potency 200, duration 50 seconds, which is very nice. Free regen on there. Decimate. Potency's been changed from 250 to 200. Onslaught. Potency changed from 100 to 150. Uh, the Beast Cage cost is no longer there, and now it's got three charges. That's your gap closer. Upheaval, potency change from 450 to 350. Added shares a recast timer with Orogeny, which we're going to get into in a little bit, and it no longer costs beat gauge, which is very nice. Check it off. Now affects targets under the effect of Blood Wedding. Added additional effect restores own HP and HP of all nearby party members with a cure potency of 300. Check it off is even better than it already was before. It was a very good cooldown before, and now it's even better. Uh, inner Release has been completely revamped, and the recast has been dropped from 90 to 60. You now get three stacks of inner release, each stack allowing the use of Beast Cage actions without cost and guaranteeing that all attacks are critical and direct hits. So you have inner release and berserk for direct hit crits. Uh, additional effect nullifies stun, sleep, bind, heavy, and most knockback and draw on effects for 15 seconds. Extends surging tempest duration by 10 seconds to a maximum of 60 seconds and grants primal rend ready for 30 seconds, which we're going to get into soon. Uh, chaotic cyclone potency has been dropped from 400 to 320, but again, you get all these direct hit crits. Why wouldn't it be? Um, and Chaotic Cyclone is a direct hit crit on its own. Nascent Flash has been completely revamped and grants Nascent Flash to self and Nascent Glint, target party member. Nascent Flash restores HP with each weapon skill successfully delivered, which your potency of 400. Nascent Glint restores HP equaling 100% of that recovered by Nascent Flash while also reducing damage taken by 10%. A lot of healing. Warrior is going to be in the fray for a long time, for 8 seconds. Uh, additional effect grants Stim the Flow to target, Reducing damage taken by 10% for 4 seconds. Additional effect grants Stem the Tide to target, nullifying damage equivalent to a heal of 400 potency. 
for 20 seconds and shares a recast timer with Blood Wedding. Nascent Flash is now one of the best cooldowns of the game. Just hands down. It's very, very good. Uh, Inner Chaos. Potency changed from 920 to 650. And again, I know that seems like a huge drop. I get it. But direct hit crits. You're going to make up that potency with direct hit crits. Uh, Blood Wedding is one of your new abilities on 82. It's an instant cast for 25 seconds recast. Uh, reduces damage taken by 10% for 8 seconds. Restores HP with each weapon skill successfully delivered uh, for 400 pure potency. Grants Stem the Flow, which reduces damage taken by 10% for 4 seconds. Grants Stem the Tide. And shares a recast timer with Nascent Flash. Very, very good ability. Uh, Blood Wedding is the one you use on yourself. Nascent Flash is the one you use on somebody else. Progeny delivers an attack with a potency of 150 to all nearby enemies. Shares a recast timer with upheaval. No Beast Gates costs. Instant off global cooldown. 30 seconds recast. And Primal Rend delivers a critical direct hit to target and all enemies nearby it with a potency of 700 for the first enemy and 70% less for all remaining enemies. Stacks of inner release are not consumed upon execution. Can only be executed while under the effect of Primal Rend ready, granted by inner release, cannot be executed while bound. So you still get your direct hit crits after that. Warrior is going to feel very, very good. New traits adds a healing effect to shake it off. Uh, cure potency 300. Uh, raw intuition mastery uh, upgrades raw intuition to blood wedding. Nascent flash uh, enhanced. Nascent flash gives you the extra effects we talked about. Enhanced equilibrium is the healing over time. Melee mastery is potency of heavy swing, maim, storm's path, and storm's eye. And enhanced onslaught as that third charge. Of Warrior. Warrior's looking great. Warrior's going to be very, very fun to play. Lots of healing. Lots of damage, lots of crits. It's gonna be good. Next up, Dark Knight, and Dark Knight is almost always the class that uh, feels like it's it gets a bunch of number changes, and then it has to get another bunch of number changes right afterwards. But we'll find out. You know who knows? Uh, so right away, potency change from two hundred to one seventy on Hard Slash. Uh, potency change from one hundred to one twenty on Siphon Strike, but the combo potencies drop by forty. Then we have Unleash. Potency change from one fifty to one twenty, so another drop. Uh, unmend the range has been increased and added additional effect reduces the recast timer plunge by five seconds which is nice sure why not uh soul leader potency change from 100 to 120 combo potency change from 400 to 340 again some big nerfs damage wise here but hopefully it makes it up in other places uh flood of darkness potency change from 250 to 130 but the recast time is now a second from two seconds don't know that that is worth it yet but again maybe we'll see some big changes that make it worth it uh, Edge of Darkness, potency change from 350 to 300. Recast time change from 2 seconds to 1 second. Salted Earth, uh, it no longer has, like, creates a patch that you drop. And now it creates a patch at your feet, dealing unexpected damage with a potency of 50 to any enemies who enter. And added action changes to Salt and Darkness upon execution, which is a brand new thing you'll be using all the time. So hopefully that helps out with some of that potency loss. Uh, again, Plunge, increased range, drop a potency. Missile Drain. Range increased, potency dropped by 50, added, restores MP, and added shares a recast timer with Carve and Spit. It's weird those two share a recast timer, but okay. Uh, Carve and Spit got its potency increased so every 60 seconds, 510 potency. That's pretty good. Uh, and shares a recast timer with Abyssal Drain. Blood Spiller, potency changed from 600 to 500. Getting a lot of potency drops here for Dark Knight and not seeing a bunch of reasons yet. Quietus, potency changed from 210 to 200. Uh, which, you know, again, that's not a huge drop, but that's okay. Uh, delirium has been changed. It now grants three stacks of delirium, each stack allowing the execution of Quietus or Blood Spiller without black blood cost, restoring MP when landing either weapon skill. So you can use them more often, so that might balance it out. Uh, and it's every 60 seconds. You can do three of them to get MP back as well. So it, it honestly might balance it out. We'll see. Star Wars Soul, combo potency has been dropped. Uh, Flood of Shadow, potency has been dropped. Uh, Edge of Shadow, potency has been dropped. Living Shadow, add additional effect. Simulacrum is able to execute Shadowbringer, delivering an attack to all enemies in a straight line. Before it, with a potency of 450 for the first enemy, 25% less. 25% less is pretty good. Like, Warrior got 70% less. But 25% less, that's going to be a very good AoE now with Living Shadow. Uh, new move, Oblation, reduces damage taken by a party member or self by 10%. Two charges, which is nice, for 10 seconds. Uh, no cures or, or heals or anything like that, but two charges. Very nice. 
Salt and Darkness. All enemies standing in the Corrupted Patch of Salted Earth take additional unexpected damage with a potency of 500 for the first enemy and 50% less for all remaining enemies. Do you do that every 20 seconds? That might balance it out, honestly. And then Shadowbringer every 60 seconds. 600% uh, potency to the first enemy in a straight line in front of you. Two charges. You line that up right, you're getting some good damage, uh, but 50% less for all remaining. So, Again, Dark Knight not super impressing me here. I think a lot of these are nerfs, but I feel like if it's not performing well, they will buff these numbers back up. And some of the new stuff is pretty cool. Enhanced traits. Unmin now reduces the cast of plunge. Uh, increase the potency of hard strike, siphon strike, and soul eater. Increase the potency of attacks dealt by your simulacrum to 300, which is very good. And upgrades Flood of Shadow to Shadowbringer when used by your simulacrum. So, again, I don't think these are as big changes as I hoped it would be, but it's not bad. We'll see We'll see how it turns out in play. Next up is Gunbreaker for the last of our tanks. Keen Edge, uh, potency's been dropped. Brutal Shell, potency has been upped, but combo potency's been dropped, just like all the others. Potency's been dropped by 50 for Demon Slice. Uh, range has been increased for Lightning Shot. Then we have Solid Barrel. Potency's been changed from 100 to 120. Combo potency has been dropped by 60. Uh, burst Strike, and again, that's a big drop, 500 to 380, but an added effect grants Ready to Blast for 10 seconds. Uh, Demon Slaughter, potency's been almost halved. Uh, Aurora now has two charges, which is very good. Super Bolide now lasts for 10 seconds, which is very good. Uh, Sonic Breaks, potency for damage over time, has dropped by 30 per tick. That's a lot. Rough Divide has been dropped, but the range has been increased. Mashing Fang has been dropped to 360 from 450. Savage Claw has been dropped from 550 to 440. Wicked Talon has been dropped from 650 to 520. And Bow Shock has been dropped as well with the damage over time as well. These are big nerfs for, for uh, Gunbreaker. Continuation, added Burst Strike, maybe followed by Hyper Velocity. But again, it may pay off. There may be something kind of like Warrior and Dark Knight that makes me go, okay, I can see where the potency is coming back up. Jugular Rips been dropped from 260 to 180. Uh, abdomen Tears from 280 to 220. Eye Gouge from 300 to 260. Faded Circle from 320 to 290. Uh, however, Blood Fest has been changed from adding two cartridges to adding uh, two cartridges. That's, oh, to adding three cartridges. They've got the revision wrong here. That's nice. And Blasting Zone is from 800 to 700, man. Some big nerfs for Gunbreaker. Uh, but Heart of Corundum... Reduces damage taken by a party member or self by 15% for 8 seconds. When targeting a party member while under the effect of Brutal Shell, the effect is also granted to the target uh, for duration for 30 seconds. Additional effect grants Clarity of Corundum to target, which reduces damage taken by 15% for 4 seconds. Grants Catharsis of Corundum to target. Restores HP when HP falls below 50% or upon effect during expiration, kind of like XCOG. And the Cure Potency is 900 for 20 seconds. That's pretty good. It's a pretty good cooldown. Hypervelocity to 86, delivers an attack with a potency of 180, can only be executed when ready to blast. Uh, and then Double Down, delivers an attack to all nearby enemies with a potency of 1,200 for the first enemy and 20% less for all remaining enemies. It costs two cartridges, but it does not share a recast timer with any other actions. OGCD for 1,200 potency for two cartridges. 20%, that's where all the potency's at. That's why all the nerfs. If you're going to be doing that, every 60 seconds and just chunking enemies. That's going to feel really good, though I wish we didn't have to come with everything else as well. Uh, at 80, upgrades Danger Zone to Blasting Zone. Uh, at 82, upgrades Heart of Stone to Heart of Corundum. Uh, then there's the, allows the charges for Aurora, uh, Keen Edge, Brutal Shell, and Solid Barrel get their damage ups. Ready to Blast after executing Burst Strike in uh, 86 and increases Powder Gauge to three cartridges uh, in 88. Gunbreaker, again, Gonna feel a little weaker at first, but once you get to 90, Gunbreaker's gonna feel great. That's a lot of damage. Now we get into our healers. And we've got so many more classes to talk about. I'm gonna do this all in one take. We're 25 minutes in and we've only covered four. Uh, so we're gonna try and keep going here. <clears throat> White Mage. Cast time change from 2.5 to 1.5 seconds. We're gonna see that a lot uh, because they're trying to bring everything to the, the, the set timer. Uh, cure potency has been upped for cure, which is good. Cast time changed from 2.5 to 2 seconds on Medica. MP cost has been dropped by 100 to 900 instead of 1,000. 
Stone 2, potency has been dropped by a little bit, but cast time changed to 1.5. Uh, cure 2, cure potency has been increased by 100. Presence of Mind, recast time has been dropped by 30 seconds to 120 seconds, 2 minutes instead of 3. Uh, Regen, cure potency has been increased. Regen is going to be even stronger now at 250. Uh, cure 3 has been up to 600. Holy MP cost has dropped from 600 to 400. It's going to be a lot of holies. Medica 2, cure potency has changed from 200 to 250. Your potency over time changed from 100 to 150. Cast time changed from 2.5 to 2 seconds. MP cost changed from 1,300 to 1,000. Pretty good. That's pretty good. So far, just buffs. Uh, Aflatus Solus, cure potency has gone up by 100. Stone 3, uh, which has been updated. Uh, potency has been dropped by 10 potency. But the cast time has been dropped to 1.5. You're more than going to make up for that in that time. Thin Air uh, no longer has decreases MP cost of all actions by 100. So now it's just the next action executed is without MP cost, and it's every 60 seconds with two charges. That's still going to pay off, I think, in the long run. Stone 4, the potency's dropped by 10, but the cast time's been halved almost. Uh, Divine Benison now has charges, two of them. Dia now does half the damage, uh, which is unfortunate, but, you know, you're, real, you're using Dia for the damage over time, you know. Glare, uh, potency's been dropped by 10, but the recast time is almost half. Aflatus Solace, uh, cure potency has been increased by 100, and then we get our new stuff for White Mage. Glare 3 deals unexpected damage with a potency of 310. Holy 3 deals unexpected damage with a potency of 150 to all nearby enemies with no drop off. Additional effect stun for 4 seconds. And Holy's damage right now is 140. So it's still, it's gone up by 10. But the MP cost is only 400. You can do it every 2.5 seconds. I think it's still going to pay off. Aqua Veil reduces damage taken by a party member or self by 15% for 8 seconds. That's a pretty good cooldown. And then Liturgy of the Bell. Also, Fluid Aura is gone. They deleted Fluid Aura. Liturgy of the Bell places a healing blossom at the designated location and grants 5 stacks of Liturgy of the Bell to self for 15 seconds. Taking damage will expend 1 stack of Liturgy of the Bell to heal self. And all party members within a radius of 20 alms. I wish it was 50 like the LB3 is. Now, your potency of 400. The effect of the action can only be triggered once per second. Good for 15 seconds and you get 5 stacks. Uh, the healing blossom dissipates when all stacks are expended or the effect expires. Any remaining stacks of Liturgy of the Bell when effect expires will trigger an additional healing effect of a cure potency 200 for every remaining stack of Liturgy of the Bell. Doesn't share a recast with anything. That's going to be weird to use, but I think it will be really nice. Since even if you don't take damage and it doesn't proc, with the end of 15 seconds, it procs anyway. Kind of like Heavenly Star. Lucid Dreaming's potency has been increased to 55, which is nice. Then we got our new traits, Glare to Glare 3, Holy to Holy 3. Weird that it's not Glare 2, Holy 2, but you know. Uh, <laughs> increases the healing potency of Cure uh, at 85 with all the, the changes, and then Enhanced Benison. Uh, very good. White Mage is going to feel strong. Uh, it always has. It probably always will. Didn't get anything super crazy, but it's going to do its job just fine. Then we have Scholar. Scholar has Ruin. Got the exact same treatment. I feel like we're going to get the exact same treatment everywhere here. Uh, cast times have all been reduced. Uh, Whispering Dawn. Cure potency has been dropped from 120 to 80. That's a little unfortunate. Adlo. Uh, the barrier effect amount changed from nullifying damage equaling 125% to nullifying damage equaling 180%. And the effect can't be stacked with Nocturnal Field to effect cannot be stacked with certain Sage Barrier effect. Uh, so now it's even better. It just can't be stacked. Uh, Sikor is the exact same way. 160% can't be stacked. Ruin 2. Uh, potency has been increased to 220, which is pretty nice. Ether Flow. MP regeneration amount changed from 10% to 20% of maximum HP or MP. Very nice. Energy Drain no longer restores MP, but you can do it Every second now, if you have ether flow, you can just burn through those. Just fire the gun over and over again. Art of War has been increased to 165, and the cost has been reduced to 400. Not a huge potency increase, but the MP cost drop alone will pay for that, and you'll be doing a lot more damage. Royal uh, potency has been dropped by a little bit, but the cast time has gone up or has dropped uh, quite a bit, just like all the white mage stuff. Uh, deployment tactics: the area has been increased. 10, 15, and the recast time has been dropped to 90, which is very nice. Broil 2, potency dropped a little bit. Cast time dropped quite a bit. Uh, Broil 3, the same way. 
Fey Blessing, potency's been dropped by a little bit to 320 out of 350. Summon Seraph now adds uh, changes to Constellation upon execution. Constellation, uh, cure potencies change from 300 to 250. So now the button changes into the other button, and it does a little bit less, but you can do it. Sure, why not? Roll 4 is 295 damage. Art of War 2, an upgrade to Art of War, is 180 to all nearby enemies, still for 400 MP. Protraction increases maximum HP of a party member or self by 10%. And restores the amount increased. Also increases HP recovery via healing actions by 10% for 10 seconds. That's a good cooldown. And then Expedient, the, the one people are joking and making fun of. Grants expedience and desperate measures to all nearby party members. Increases movement speed and reduces damage taken by 10% for 20 seconds. Sure. Potencies have been increased on some of the stuff here. The basic heal for your fairy, but the everything else I think has been dropped. Yeah. Your basic heal for your fairy is better, but everything else is, is worse. Uh, has been nerfed by a little bit. And then Lucid Dreaming, of course, we already got the change on that. Royal Mastery uh, increases the potency of Ruin 2 and Art of War to 160. Uh, is now 160 and 165. And then, of course, we talked about these already. Uh, it's good, right? It's not bad, but kind of like White Mage, it's made some of the stuff better, some of the stuff worse, and I don't, mostly better, I don't think it got anything like super crazy, you know? Astrologian is next. We're going to have probably the exact same changes here. Potencies on Cures go up. Cast times go down, uh, just like expected. Uh, Essential Dignity no longer is... Potency increased up to 1,100. Now it's 900 as their health decreases, reaching its maximum value when the target is 30% HP or less, uh, which is kind of unfortunate because it's not a, a fix-it button now, but it's still not terrible. Uh, potency increased on Benefic uh, 2, and it does the exact same thing. Draw is now completely different. Draws a card from your Divining deck. Only one Arcanum can be drawn at a time. Arcanum effects can be triggered using the action play. Restores 5% of maximum MP and grants clarifying draw, allowing the execution of redraw with two charges. Play is back and just lets you play the card you drew. Uh, Aspect of Benefic is completely different. It now restores HP with 250 and a regen of 250 for 15 seconds. Pretty good. Uh, redraw. Uh, it no longer has maximum charges because you get the redraws automatically now. And uh, the recast time has been dropped to a second. Just draws a different card. Aspect of Helios. Uh, it is now basically the same. 250 with a regen of 150 for 15 seconds. Gravity, uh, potency has been dropped a little bit, but MP cost has been dropped as well. Divination, uh, the effect of the action has been completely revamped. Increases damage dealt by self and nearby party members by 6% for 15 seconds. And it's an off-global cooldown ability uh, instead of being a thing that you build up to now with your cards. And now you get Astrodyne, uh, which is brand new. Grants an effect using the Astro Signs read from your Divining deck. It can only be executed after reading three Astro Signs. Effects granted are determined by the number of different types of Astro Signs read. One sign type is Grant's Harmony of Spirit. Two sign types is Harmony of Spirit, Harmony of Body. And three signs are Harmony of Spirit, Harmony of Body, Harmony of Mind. Duration for 15 seconds. Spirit effect is gradually restores own MP with a potency of 50. Body effect is reduces spell cast time and recast time and auto attack delay by 10%. And Mind effect is increased damage dealt to healing potency by 5%. That's very good. That's very good. Astrodyne is going to be a great ability. Malefic 2, potency's dropped a little bit. Collective Uncon has been completely changed, reduces damage taken by 10%, and applies Wheel of Fortune to self and all any nearby party members who enter for 18 seconds. Wheel of Fortune effect is the region, 100 pure potency for 15 seconds. The effect ends upon using another action or moving. It also cancels your auto attack upon execution. Uh, still very good ability. Collective Uncon has always been great. Uh, Celestial Opposition uh, now restores 200 potency and a region of 100 potency for 15 seconds. Earthly Star, the Stellar Burst Potency has been doubled and increased to 205, and the uh, Explosion Potency from 150 to 310, and the area radius has changed from 8 to 20. Earthly Star is going to be even better than it ever was before. Stellar Detonation, uh, the Burst is 100 to 205, 150 to 310, and 8 to 20, because again, it's just the button changes. Malevic 3, lost 20 Potency, uh, Minor Arcana, you now get it at 70 instead of 50. Uh, and you draw either the Lord of Crowns or the Lady of Crowns. Uh, it can be triggered using play or crown play, which is a new ability. Only be executed while in contact. 
uh, combat, and the recast times change from 1 to 60 seconds. So every 60 seconds, you draw with uh, Minor Arcana into crown play. Then Combust 3 also got a small, small potency change uh, nerf, and Malefic 4 got a small potency nerf. And then Celestial Intersection uh, added two charges. No longer has the Nocturnal Sect. Uh, Nocturnal Sect is gone. That effect is gone and will never be again. Instead, Neutral Sect has been completely revamped. Increases your healing magic potency by 20% for 20 seconds. When casting Aspected Benefic or Aspected Helios, erects a magic barrier which nullifies damage. Uh, the nullifying damage is equal to 250% of the amount of HP restored, and the Helios effect is nullifies damage equaling 125% of the amount of HP restored for 30 seconds. That's a very, very good cooldown now. Neutral Sect kind of always was a very really good cooldown, but now it is just like, bam! Healing and defense. Go. Which is pretty great. Then we now have Fall Malefect instead of Fell Malefect, uh, which is 250. Gravity 2, which is 130. Uh, Exaltation, which reduces damage taken by self or target party member by 10% for a duration of 8 seconds. Additional effect is restores HP at the end of the effect's duration with a cure potency of 500. That's pretty good. That's pretty solid. Macrocosmos is next, which deals unexpected damage to all nearby enemies with a potency of 250 for the first enemy. 40% less for all remaining enemies. It grants Macrocosmos to self and all nearby party members for 15 seconds. The action changes to Microcosmos upon execution. For the effect's duration, 50% of damage taken is compiled. Restores HP equal to a cure of 200 potency plus compiled damage when the effect expires or upon execution of Microcosmos. Amount restored cannot exceed the target's maximum HP. The action does not share a recast timer with any other action. That seems really good. You do the damage, 40% drop off, you get the heal for all damage taken during it as well. And then whenever you want, you hit Microcosmos, which triggers the healing effect of Macrocosmos, restoring HP equal to a cure of 200 potency plus 50% of the compiled damage. That's very good. Card's been updated. Uh, the balance now grants a solar seal when used, or it used to grant a solar seal, now grants a solar sign. The arrow now grants a lunar sign. The spear now grants a celestial sign. Bull now grants a solar sign. Ewer now grants a lunar sign. And Spire now grants a celestial sign. Lord of Crowns, uh, the potency is 250 to all nearby enemies. Range has been changed from 30 to 0. That's pretty crazy. And the area of radius instead is 20 from 0. Uh, so you can cast it on the, the radius around you. And then uh, Lady of Crowns is the same way. And we have Enhanced Draw, Glance clar Clarifying Draw after executing Draw. Uh, the signs, uh, and all of the other updates. <coughs> this is what everything's going to look like now. Astrologia is looking pretty good. Astrologia is looking pretty solid. I like it. Next up is Sage. Sage is a, a very interesting job. I'm excited for it a lot. I, oh man, there's a part of me that wants to just do a brand new video for Sage, but we'll just lump it in here. We have Dosis, 300 potency, unexpected damage, restores HP to target under the effect of Cardian granted by you. Your potency of 170. Diagnosis, uh, which is a target HP 450 heal. Uh, cardia, uh, which is grant self the effect of Cardia and selected party member or self the effect of Cardian, restoring HP after certain magic attacks. That's at level 4 you get that, so you can immediately start using it. Uh, prognosis, restores own HP and the HP of all nearby party members with a cure potency of 300. Garo, resurrects target to a weakened state at level 12, so you have it before Sestasha, which is nice. Physis, or Physis, Gradually restores own HP and HP of all nearby party members with cure potency of 100, duration of 15 seconds. Very nice. Phlegma deals unexpected damage to target and all... Are there any shield abilities yet? No. Uh, we're at level 26 and we don't have any shield abilities yet. Huh. Uh, Phlegma deals unexpected damage to target and all enemies nearby it with potency of 400 for the first enemy, 30% less for all remaining, and restores HP to targets under the effect of Cardian granted by you with a cure potency of 170. That's two charges. I can't wait to play Sage. I'm so excited for it. Gracia augments certain offensive and healing magic effects. Dosis 3 is augmented to Eucrasian Dosis. Diagnosis is augmented to Eucrasian Diagnosis. Prognosis is upgraded to Eucrasian Prognosis. Eucrasian Diagnosis, you get all of these at level 30, huh? Restores target HP. Erects a magic barrier. So at 30 is when you start being able to use your magic barriers. 180% uh, of the amount of HP restored. 
Critical HP is restored also grants differential diagnosis, nullifying damage equaling 180% the amount of HP restored. Duration of 30 seconds. Cannot be stacked with Eucrasian Prognosis or Scholar's Galvanize. Really going to need to play this myself to see how all this works together, but I'm really liking the way it looks. Uh, Eucrasian Prognosis is uh, the AoE version, which is a 320 barrier uh, to everybody for 30 seconds, which is very good. Eucrasian Dosis is restores HP to targets under the effect of Cardian granted by you with 170, and it has a dot, basically. Very nice. Eucrasia, we get uh, instant with one second recast. Okay, awesome. Soteria, increases the cure potency of Cardian effects by 50%. Very good, for 15 seconds. Icarus is the movement ability, which looks really cool. Drochol, Drochol, restores targets HP, cure potency of 600, additional effect restores 7% of maximum MP, Cost an Adder's Gall, which we'll get into, I'm sure. Discrasia is deals unexpected damage with a potency of 160 to all nearby enemies. Additional effect restores HP to targets under the effect of Cardian granted to you, granted by you, uh, with 170 still. Caracol, Caracol, reduces damage taken by self and nearby party members with a percent. It's a shield. Uh, cannot be stacked with Tarakchol. Uh, and it's a region of 100 as well and restores 7% of maximum MP. Cost an Adder's Gall. Ixachol. Also costs an adder goal. That's a uh, big AOE heal. Restores 7% of maximum HP. Zoe, or Zoe, increases healing magic potency of your next healing spell by 15, 50% for 30 seconds. Very nice. Pepsis, restores own HP and HP of nearby party members by removing Eucrasian diagnosis. Eucrasian prognosis effects gain granted by you. It's really interesting. Uh, but if they didn't have Eucrasian diagnosis or Eucrasian prognosis, they won't be healed. That's a cool way to do that. Uh, Physis 2 gradually restores own HP and HP of all nearby party members. Increases HP recovered by healing actions by 10% for 10 seconds. Very nice. Torachol uh, restores own or target party members' HP for 700 cure potency. Reduces target's damage taken by 10%. Can't be stacked with Karachol. Lost an Adder's Gall and restores 7% of HP. Toxicon deals unexpected damage to target and all enemies nearby with a potency of 300 for the first enemy. 50% less for all remaining enemies. Source HP to targets under Cardian. Uh, cost an Adder Sting. Hyma erects a magical barrier for 300 potency. Five stacks of Hymatinon. Hymatinon. Uh, for 15 seconds. When the barrier is completely absorbed, a stack of Hymatinon is con used, consumed. And a new barrier is applied. That's a cool ability. The effect duration expires. A healing effect is then applied for 150 per remaining stack of Hymation. Hymatinon. Dosis 2, unexpected damage with a potency of 320. Uh, restores for Cardian, of course. Uh, Phlegma 2, uh, 490, 50% drop off. Restores Cardian, has two charges. Crazy and Dosis uh, deals unexpected damage over time again. Cardian effect, of course. Uh, Rizomata grants a stack of Adder's Gall. You get that every 90 seconds. Holos restores own HP and HP of all nearby party members for 300 and reduces damage taken by 10% for 20 seconds. Very, very good. <laughs> Panheima erects a magical barrier around self and all nearby party members that absorbs damage equivalent to a heal of 200 potency. Five stacks of Panheimatinon. The barrier is completely absorbed. A stack of Panheimatinon is consumed and a new barrier is applied. When the effect duration expires, the healing effect is then applied. 100 per remaining stack of Panheimatinon. Pi Hematanon? That's it. Pi Pan Hemat Pan Hematanon. Pan Hematanon. Got it. Dosis 3 deals unexpected damage with a potency of 330 and has Cardian. Slugma 3 is 510 with drop off and Cardigan. Uh, very good. Still two charges. Eutrasian Dosis 3 is uh, deals 70 potency and has Cardian. Discrasia 2 is 170 AoE and has Cardian. Toxicon 2 is 330 uh, with drop off as Cardian and cost an Adder Sting. Crasis increases HP recovery via healing actions for a party member herself by 20% for 10 seconds on a 60 second cooldown. That's pretty good. And then Numa is the beam. Deals unexpected damage to all enemies in a straight line before you with a potency of 330 for the first enemy and 40% less for all remaining enemies. Additional effect restores own HP and the HP of all party members within a radius of 20 alms. For 600 potency, thank goodness you don't have to hit them with a laser. Has Cardian and does not share a recast timer with anything else. You can do that every 120 seconds. I love it. Uh, then we have our traits. We have uh, Maim and Min, of course, increases base action damage by 10%, 30%. Adder's Gall at 45, grants a stack of Adder's Gall automatically every 20 seconds for three stacks. Can be charged outside of combat. Awesome. 
Some Somanatic Oath, increase the potency of Dosis, uh, Phlegma, and Eucrasian Dosis. Business Mastery, uh, and of course, here's another increase to your potencies. Adder Sting grants one stack of Adder Sting when the barrier granted by Eucrasian Diagnosis is completely absorbed. You have three stacks. Offensive Magic Mastery increases your potency even more. Uh, Caracol adds an additional effect to Caracol that grants healing over time. Uh, more potency increases, more healing magic increases, and enhanced Zoe reduces Zoe's recast timer to. Here's our job gauge, the Euphrasia gauge, the Adder's Gall gauge, and the Adder Sting gauge. Uh, looks great. Can't wait for it. Very, very excited for Sage. This is going to be my main. Uh, so I'm excited to play around with it and learn more about it. Moving on from healers into physical DPS, melee DPS. <clears throat> we have so many more to cover. And we're not stopping, so let's just keep going. We have Bootshine. The combo potency has been upped a little bit. Lead and Fist potency combo has been dropped. Uh, additional effect, Opo Opo form deals a critical hit if the rear is now just critical hit. And the duration has changed from 15 to 30 seconds. This is for the sake of all the changes to all the forms. Uh, so expect those as well. Uh, there are no rear potency, side potency. That's all gone now. Uh, True Strike now does more damage. It has a shorter recast time. Snap Punch now does a little bit less damage, but still has flank potency. It doesn't no rear potency, but flank potency. Uh, duration change from 15 to 30. Meditation, which is an updated class quest. Uh, you now get it as a pugilist. You can open your chakra early and added action changes to the forbidden chakra when all five chakra are open. You no longer have that as a separate button. Steel Peak is back. Delivers an attack with a potency of 180. Can only be executed while in combat. It'll be effective with the fifth chakra. Five chakra close upon execution. Here's a recast timer with Howling Fist. Twin Snakes. Flank potency is gone for Twin Snakes. Uh, 230 to 280. Uh, no longer does it just increase your damage by 10%. Uh, it now is Disciplined Fist. It increases your damage by 15%. And the curl form is now 30 seconds as well. Armor of the Destroyer. Potency has been dropped a little bit. Uh, but the duration has been changed to 30 seconds for your, your combo. <clears throat> Demolish the same way. Rock Breaker uh, the same way. But your combo, it's still going to make up for itself because you also now have Thunderclap, which is your rush to a targeted enemy or party member's location for three charges. You have Howling Fist, which has come back. Deliver an attack with a potency of 100 to all enemies in a straight line before you. Can only be executed while in combat and of the effect of the fifth chakra. Five chakra close upon execution. Uh, four point Fury has been dropped a little bit, but now it just it has Discipline Fist as well. Increase your damage by 15%. Uh, Dragon Kick. You now get it uh, at level 50, and it's increased to 320. No longer has flank potency, and the raptor form is longer, of course. Perfect balance. <clears throat> you now get as a monk instead of a pugilist. Your stack amount changes from 6 to 3. Your duration is increased to 20 seconds. It now has grants Opa Opa Chakra, Quarrel Chakra, and Raptor Chakra, depending on the form, uh, with maximum charges of 2. Recast time is dropped to 40 seconds and can only be executed while in combat now. Form shift, duration's been changed to 30 seconds. And the Forbidden Chakra uh, now cannot be assigned to a hotbar. Still 340 potency. Masterful Blitz is the new one. Strike the enemy with a technique fueled by the power of your Beast Chakra. Uh, one Beast Chakra is Elixir Field. Two Beast Chakra is Celestial Revolution. Three Beast Chakra is Rising Phoenix. And three Beast Chakra and both Nadi is Phantom Rush. Elixir Field, uh, that's every two seconds if you have the, the Chakra. <coughs> Elixir Field's been updated. Uh, you now have a recast time dropped from 30 seconds to 2 seconds because it's a part of Masterful Blitz. Flint Strike is one of the new ones here. Um, a level 60 ability you can get delivers an attack to all nearby enemies with a potency of 600 for the first enemy, 70% less. Opens the Solar Nadi, grants Formless Fist, allowing the execution of a weapon skill that requires a certain form without being in that form for 30 seconds. Any additional effects associated with the execution effect will also be applied. Can only be executed while under the effect of three distinct beast chakra. Celestial Revolution is new. Uh, 450. Uh, this is also the two chakra types. And this one opens the Lunar Nadi. The Lunar Nadi is already open. It opens the Solar Nadi instead. It also grants Formless Fist and works the exact same way. Then we have Tornado Kick. Uh, it is now a weapon skill instead of an ability. And instead of 400 potency, it now is 850 with drop-off, which is incredible. Uh, it also now has Formless Fist as well, and the recast time has been dropped from 45 seconds 
to two seconds, but it can only be effect it can only be used while under the effect of Lunar Nadi, Solar Nadi, as well as three Beast Chakra, just like Phantom Rush. Which I assume is what Tornado Kick will turn into. Riddle of Earth, our effect potency has been changed from 10% to 20%. Uh, and all the other effects, basically, of, like, giving you less damage has been removed. And then Riddle of Fire as well. Increase the damage by 15% instead of 25%. But the recast is 60 seconds instead of 90. Brotherhood now changed its own trigger rate from 20% to 100%. And recast timer has been changed from 90 to 120 seconds, which is very, very good. Riddle of Wind is back. Reduces your auto attack delay by 50%. So you're going to be auto attacking a lot more for 15 seconds. <clears throat> a lot of stuff coming back, you know, to Monk. Enlightenment had its potency dropped a little bit. Notman now changed the effect from Twin Stakes to Disciplined Fists. Six-Sided Star, potency's been increased by 10. And then we get our new stuff. Shadow of the Destroyer, which is a potency of 110 to all nearby enemies and guarantees a critical hit if in open opal form. That changes you to Raptor. Uh, Rising Phoenix, these are your Blitz moves, I believe. Yeah, Celestial Revolution, Rising Phoenix, Phantom Rush. Uh, Rising Phoenix uh, deals physical fire damage to all nearby enemies. The potency of 700 with drop off opens the Solar Nadi, grants Formless Fist, uh, can only be executed while under the effect of three distinct Beast Chakra. And Phantom Rush delivers an attack with a potency. Wait, hold on. To target in all enemies nearby it with 1,000 for the first enemy and 50% less drop off? That's pretty good, but you can only use it when you have everything. Fist of Earth, Fist of Wind, Shoulder Tackle, Fist of Fire are all gone. Uh, yeah, Monk is gonna, Monk is gonna be really fun to play, I think, and bringing back a lot of the old abilities feels good, you know? Faint's been changed a little bit, uh, now it's just lowers their physical damage dealt by 10%, and magic damage dealt by 5%, okay. Uh, Deep Meditation, you now get it at 60, 38 instead of 62. Uh, Steel Peak to Forgetting Chakra, Balance, yeah, we got all those already, Holly Fist to Enlightenment. And also improves Disciplined Fist damage increase to 15%. So, very, very good stuff. I think that there's your combos. Boot Shine, Dragon Kick, uh, Shadow of the Destroyer, Armor of the Destroyer, Your Strike, Trend Snakes. Uh, wait, hold on. I'm, I'm looking at this wrong. I'm sorry. Boot Shine into True Strike into Demolish. I was very confused. Dragon Kick into Twin Snakes and Snap Punch. Shadow of the Destroyer, Armor of the Destroyer into Four Point Fury into Rock Breaker. That makes way more sense. And your gauge with the Master Gauge. Yeah, Monk looks like it's going to be really fun. I'm excited to play around with it for sure. Next up, Dragoon. Uh, a little bit of drop here, and then changed Ride and Thrust Ready to Draconian Fire. Thorpal Thrust, getting a little bit of a drop. Combo drop. I assume that's because we're going to get some good stuff later on. Life Surge now has charges. Uh, range has been increased for Piercing Talon. Some Bowels, all of its stuff has been dropped a little bit too, but now it grants Power Surge. Power Surge effect has increased the damage down by 10%. Same way it did before. Really, it's just that new name. Full Thrust, combo bonus change from Grant Sharper Fang and Claw. Uh, if under the effects of Blood of the Dragon, to just Grant Sharper Fang and Claw. Lance Charge. Uh, <clears throat> it's now from 15 to 10%, but you get it every 60 seconds instead. I think that will balance out. Jump's potency goes up by 10. That's cool. Doom Spike uh, gets a pretty big drop, but action changes Draconian Fury when under the effect of Draconian Fire. Fine Shatter Dive from 240 to 250 and adds two maximum charges. Chaos Thrust. Uh, from Grant's Enhanced Wheeling Thrust uh, to Grant's Enhanced Wheeling Thrust no matter what, and Enhanced Wheeling Thrust duration changed from 10 seconds to 30 seconds, which is very nice. Dragonfire Dive, potency's changed from 380 to 300. That hurts. That's a big drop. Battle Litany, duration changed from 20 seconds to 15 seconds. Recast time changed from 180 to 120. So that's not bad at all, you know? Uh, duration's a little bit lower. Uh, but the recast time comes faster, so you get to use it more. Fang and Claw. Uh, now, instead of needing Blood of the Dragon, it's just while under the effects of Sharper Fang and Claw, and you no longer need Blood of the Dragon at all for it. Willing Thrust is the exact same way. Your Skogel, potency's been dropped. 30% less potency for all remaining enemies, uh, but you no longer need Blood of the Dragon for it. Sonic Thrust. Uh, no longer combos off of the Blood of the Dragon combo, of course, and now instead just grants more Power Surge for 30 seconds. Uh, Mirage Dive, uh, instead of strengthening the Gaze of the Dragon, it now, uh, by one, if under the effect of Blood of the Dragon, it now strengthens the Gaze of it by one, just on its own. You don't need Blood of the Dragon anymore at all. 
Uh, Nastron, potency's dropped, and it has drop off now. These are some big big nerfs, actually, in a way. Uh, deleted combo bonus. Yeah, so Blood of the Dragon, you don't need it for Curthen. Uh, Torment anymore, now you get Draconian Fire. Raiden Thrust, potency's been dropped. Uh, additional effect sharpens the first mind's focus by one and changed from Raiden Thrust ready to Draconian Fire. Star Driver, potency's dropped from 600 to 500. And then we get our new stuff, which hopefully will make up for it. Draconian Fury delivers an attack with a potency of 130 to all enemies in a straight line before you. Sharpens the first mind's focus by one. Can only be executed while under the effect of Draconian Fire. Heaven's Thrust delivers an attack with a potency of 100. Combos off of Vorpal Thrust uh, with a combo potency of 430. Grants Sharper Fang and Claw for a duration of 30 seconds. And ends upon execution of any melee weapon skill. Chaotic Spring delivers an attack with a potency of 100. 140 when executed from the target's rear. Combos off of Disembowel. Combo potency is 240. Rear combo potency is 280 with a damage over time potency of 45 for 25 seconds. Combo bonus grants enhanced wheeling thrust, a duration of 30 seconds. Effective enhanced wheeling thrust ends upon execution of any melee weapon skill. That's not bad. That, that's pretty good. And then Worm Wind Thrust delivers an attack to all enemies in a straight line before you with a potency of 370 for the first enemy, 50% less for all remaining enemies. First mind's focus cost is two. So that's pretty good, but we're getting a lot of drop off added in, which has me a little nervous. Potency increase amount. Yeah, so those are our less potencies. Life of the Dragon now changes completely. Strengthening of the gauge of the first brood uh, with Mirage Dive. Uh, Gerstrogel will grant you Life of the Dragon. Uh, Gerstrogel will change to Nastron. So, you know, uh, Lance Mastery now gives Draconian Fire instead. Uh, then we have Enhanced Curse and Torment, which we already talked about. Enhanced Spine Shatter Dive gives charges. Uh, full Thrust to Heaven's Thrust and Chaos Thrust to Chaotic Spring. And uh, Life Surge gets charges. And then, of course, we get our, our final changes to First Mind's Focus. So, Truth Thrust, Full Thrust, Heaven's Thrust, or Full Thrust, Disembowel into Chaotic Spring, Chaotic Thrust. And otherwise, we're exactly the same. So, you know, it's not bad. Uh, we'll see how it plays. That's what I'm really curious about. But we'll see. I'm I'm tentatively excited. Next up is Ninja. So some more potency drops, just as expected. That's what's been happening with everything, you know. And then uh, combo potency drops, but base potency goes up. Just has been the case. Range increase for throwing dagger, of course. Uh, trick attack potency has been dropped a little bit, but that's okay. The effect wasn't changed at all. Uh, Alien edge the exact same way. Uh, combo potency has been dropped, but the individual damage is up there still. Death Blossom, a little bit of, a little bit of drop, but not too bad. Uh, you learn Assassinate at level 40 now. Uh, no longer is a crit a direct hit. Now it's just uh, 200 potency. That's unfortunate. I miss, I miss, I'm going to miss those direct hit crits a lot. Uh, Hake Mujin Sato which is uh, a little bit of a drop as well. Teton's extension change length from 70 to 60. Just a lot of nerfs here. Armor Crush goes up a little bit, but with some more combo nerfs. Uh, but the Nikki amount goes from 10 to 15, so that's nice. Dream within a dream. Uh, again, gets a little bit of drop and no longer gives Assassinate ready, which is interesting. But Assassinate uh, can still only be executed under Assassinate ready, so we'll see where that moves to. Uh, but now we have Horijin which grants Hutan for 60 seconds and increases the Ninki gauge by five and has a potency of 200. Uh, the Hellfrog Medium has a little bit of a potency drop from 200 to 160. Bava Kakra added the Meisui bonus. Potency is increased to 500 while under the effect of Meisui. Okay, interesting. Uh, Meisui itself now has the additional effect to increase the potency of Bava Kakra to 500 uh, from 400, so there's actually reasons to use Meisui now. Uh, Bunshin, potency has been dropped. Uh, the area attack potency has been dropped, uh, but now it grants Phantom Kamataichi ready, so that's nice. Phantom Kamataichi is the 82 ability. Shadow deals wind damage to all enemies within 5 yalms with a potency of 550 for the first enemy, 50% less for all remaining enemies. It extends Hutan's duration by 10 seconds to a maximum of 60 and increases the Ninki age by 5. That's nice. Hollow Nozuchi, all enemies standing in Corrupted Earth with Dotan take additional earth damage with a potency of 50, Requires Haki Mujin Sato to be executed as a combo action or upon executing Katon, Bilka Mekyaku, or Phantom Kamataichi. And it can only be triggered while Dotan is active. 50 potency, not too bad, but if it can happen every time you do that uh, to every enemy, that's not bad at all. Forked Raiju 
Rushes target and delivers a lightning attack with a potency of 400. Uh, grants fleeting Raiju ready for 15 seconds. Increases the Ninki gauge by 5. Can only be executed while under the effect of forked Raiju ready. Uh, cannot be executed while bound. Changes to fleeting Raiju upon execution. Um, with fleeting Raiju, you uh, rush forward. Okay, so it's just the other half of it. Yeah. Very cool. The ninjutsu has been updated. Uma Shuriken's potency is dropped by 50. Uh, Katon's potency is dropped by 150. Rakton's range has increased, but potency is dropped by 150. But now it grants attack to Forks Raiju, which is nice. That's cool. You can use Forks Raiju. Shotan's potency has been dropped by 50. Shutan, when you use it now, it's only 60. Dotan's potency has been dropped to 70. Sweetan's potency has been dropped by 100, but the range has increased. Gokamekyoku's potency has dropped by 150, but the range has increased. Upgrades assassinate to dream. Okay, so assassinate just becomes dream within a dream now. Uh, no longer upon successful landing Shadow Fang. Now it's just Aeolian Edge or Armor Crush because Shadow Fang's been removed, right? Um, Ninki Gauge by 15. Damage. Let's see, above Akakra. Yeah, I gotta be honest. Uh, not a huge fan of all these nerfs. Not, not loving that. Uh, but, you know. PvP hasn't changed. Um, yeah. Not a huge fan of the nerfs. But what can you do? Uh, the new stuff seems cool. Ninja looks like it's still going to be really fun to play. And I want to play around with all these new abilities. So we'll see. We'll see how things go. Next up is Samurai. Samurai is also getting nerfed. Uh, updated the combo bonus, of course, to now give Fugetsu, which increases damage up by 13%. Uh, third eye uh, no longer grants eyes open when hit and increases dead now increase the kinky gauge by 10 when hit uh, MP uh, range has been increased damage has been dropped Shifu combo potency has been dropped but grants Fuka uh, Fuga potency has been dropped Gecko has been completely revamped uh, potency of 100 combos off of Jimpu uh, combo potency is 320 increases kinky gauge by 10 and grants Getsu Mongetsu uh, it's been dropped and grants Fugetsu still. Uh, Fugetsu, of course, had changed. Um, Kasha has been completely revamped 100 150 uh, with combo off of Shifu with 320, increases Kinky Gauge. Oka 160 to 110, grants Fuka. Yukikaze 360 to 280. Again, lots of nerfs, but maybe with a number squish, it's not going to matter. Maybe that'll be a lot of damage when it's done, you know? Successfully landing Moonlight grants Fugetsu and successfully landing Bloom Shower grants Fuka. Uh, change does not affect Yajutsu. It does not affect Yajutsu or Oga Namakiri. Ogi Namakiri. Uh, added successfully landing Gekko grants Fugetsu and successfully landing Kasha grants Fuka with two charges for Mako Shishiru. It's going to be very nice. Very, very nice. <clears throat> Updated uh, Hisatsu Shinten to have a nerf. Shuten got a nerf. Gishoten grants Ogi Namakiri ready. For 30 seconds. And the recast time has been doubled. Satsugurin got a big nerf. That's a huge nerf. From 850 to 500. And it now has drop off. Uh, but now it only costs 25 king keys. So there's that. I guess you'll use it more now. That that drop off is a problem though. Uh, Sine is the same way. Been dropped from 1100 to 800. But it now has uh, less king key cost. Uh, Subama Gaishi is two charges. Shoha, uh, potency has been increased to 580 and now shares a recast timer with Shoha 2. Subama Gaishi no longer sta uh, grants stacks of meditation. Players may instead execute Ogi Namikiri. Shoha 2 delivers an attack with a potency of 200 to all nearby enemies. It can only be executed after accumulating three stacks of meditation by executing Yajutsu, Meditate, or Ogi Namikiri while in combat. Uh, meditation effect fades upon execution, shares a recast timer with Shoha. Fuko. Delivers an attack with a potency of 100 to all nearby enemies and increases the kinky gauge by 10. And it's instant. You just get to do that. <clears throat> Ogi Namikiri delivers an attack to all enemies in a cone before you with a potency of 800 for the first enemy, 75% less for all remaining enemies, but it grants a stack of meditation up to a maximum of 3. Only be executed while under the effect of Ogi Namikiri ready. And it changes to Kaishi Namikiri upon execution, which delivers an attack to all enemies in a cone before you and a potency of 1200 for the first enemy, and 75 less for everything else. Triggers the cooldown of weapon skills upon execution. Cannot be executed during the cooldown of weapon skills. That's really interesting. I don't know if I like it or not, but it's very interesting, and I'll have to see how it plays. 
because it triggers the cooldown like uh, not man or six sided star does. So we'll see. Uh, Higginbana uh, drop a potency, uh, which is unfortunate because Higginbana is actually a lot of your damage. Tenka Gokin got a drop in potency. Midari Setsugeka got a drop in potency. But it gives meditation at least. Kaishi Higginbana, of course, gets a drop. Kaishi Gokin, of course, gets a drop. And Kaishi Setsugeka gets a big drop. Uh, which is just the way of it. You know, when you're, you're dropping potencies all around, that's how it works. This kinky gauge when lending weapon skills or when taking damage under the effect of third eye. Nice. You get improved enhanced Fugetsu, enhanced Subamagaishi for two charges. Uh, Fuga becomes Fuko, uh, enhanced Mekyo Shisui, and enhanced Ikishoten. Uh, sure. Samurai, it's going to be interesting. I want to see how it plays with the nerfs, but I feel like the new stuff will balance it out. I just need to see for myself to be sure. Then finally, for our melee, we have Reaper, which is brand new. Slice is 300 potency, increases soul gauge by 10. Waxing Slice combos off of it with a potency of 140 for combo potency of 380. Increases your soul gauge by 10. Shadow of Death delivers an attack with a potency of 300. Additional effect afflicts targets with Death's design, increasing damage you deal to the target by 10%. That's pretty good for 30 seconds. Extends duration of Death's design by 30 seconds to a maximum of 60. And increases your soul gauge by 10 if the target's KO'd before the effect expires. That's really cool. Uh, Harp. Deals unexpected damage with a potency of 300. Hell's Ingress is your dash forward and allows your next heart to be cast immediately. Uh, it leaves behind a Hell's Gate at the point of origin and grants Threshold to self, which allows you to go back, I'm assuming, uh, because I've seen that ability. It's pretty cool. Hell's Egress is the backwards, which also leaves a Hell's Gate and lets you cast Threshold, or grants Threshold, which, again, I assume allows you to just go back, which is cool. Spinning Scythe delivers an attack with a potency of 140 to all nearby enemies. Increases Soul Gauge by 10. Infernal Scythe uh, Slice is the upgraded version of that with 460 potency. And Whirl of Death is a 100% potency, 100 potency, not 100%, haha, <laughs> uh, to all nearby enemies and afflicts targets with Death's design, uh, just like the single target does. Arcane Crest grants Crest of Time borrowed to self, creating a barrier that nullifies damage totaling up to 10% of maximum HP for 5 seconds. And Crest of Time return to self and nearby party members within a radius of 15 yalms when it's absorbed. Uh, which gradually restores HP with a cure potency of 115 seconds. That's pretty great. Nightmare Scythe combos off a of Spinning Scythe and has a combo potency of 180. Bloodstalk summons the Avatar for 340 potency and grants Soul Reaver for 30 seconds. The stat count will be reduced to 1 when already under the effect of Soul Reaver. Costs 50 Soul Gauge. Shares a recast timer with all Avatar attacks except Gluttony and changes to Lemur Slice while under the effect of Enshrouded. Very, very cool. Really want to play Reaver. Seems really nice. Grim Swath summons your avatar to deliver an attack with a potency of 140 to all enemies in the cone before you. Grant Soul Reaver again, which is very nice. A Soul Slice delivers an attack with a potency of 460. Increases your soul gauge by 50 and has two charges. That's pretty good. Soul Scythe delivers an attack with a potency of 180. Increases your soul gauge by 50 and has two charges, but shares a recast timer with Soul Slice. Very nifty. Uh, Gibbet delivers an attack with a potency of 400. 460 when executed from the flank. Uh, enhanced Gibbet's 460. Flank Enhanced is 520 and grants Enhanced Gallows. Bloodstalk changes to Unveiled Gallows, one of the effective Enhanced Gallows, and increases your Shroud Gauge by 10. That's a lot going on here that I kind of need to play it myself to understand, but I like what I'm seeing on how things enhance each other and build up. Gallows is 400. We've already talked about the Enhanced versions. Uh, guillotine is 200 and increases your soul Shroud Gauge by 10, which is pretty cool. Unveiled Gibbet <clears throat> is the summoning of the Avatar for 400 potency. Unveiled Gallows is uh, the Avatar version of Gallows for 400 potency. Uh, Arcane Circle increases the damage dealt by self and nearby party members by 3% for 20 seconds. Grants Circle a sacrifice to self and nearby party members for 5 seconds, which grants Blood Sown Circle to self for 6 seconds. Circle of Sacrifices when you or a party member is under this effect successfully land a weapon skill or cast a spell. The Reaper who applied it may be granted a stack of Immortal Sacrifice up to a maximum of 8 for 30 seconds. <laughs> the Blood Sworn Circle effect allows you to accumulate stacks of Immortal Sacrifice from party members under the effect of your Circle of Sacrifice. That's very cool. Regress, move instantly to the Hell's Gate left behind by you, which can only be executed under the effect of Threshold, which is very nice. Gluttony summons your avatar to deal unexpected damage to target and all enemies nearby it with a potency of 500 for the first enemy and 25% less for all remaining enemies and grants two stacks of Soul Reaver. Enshroud offers your flesh as a vessel to the avatar, granting maximum stacks of Lemur Shroud for 30 seconds, 
Certain actions cannot be executed while playing host of the avatar. You get void reaping, which is 460 to 520 and grants enhanced cross, uh, grants void shroud. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that's being granted here. Cross reaping is 460, 520, enhanced void reaping and void shroud. Grim reaping is 200 to all enemies in a cone. It's again, it's kind of like bard or not bard dancer where you have the attack and then you have the better version of the attack and you build up to it, you know? Soul so is changing the action to Harvest Moon. Cast times instant when used outside of battle. And then Harvest Moon is 600 potency with a drop-off. Very good. Lemur's Slice is 200 and costs 2 Void Shroud. Lemur's Scythe is 100 and costs 2 Void Shroud. Plentiful Harvest is delivered and attacked to all enemies in a straight line before you with a potency of 520 for the first enemy, 60% less for all remaining enemies. Your Immortal Sacrifice cost is 1 stack. Potency increases up to 800 as stacks of Immortal Sacrifice exceed minimum cost. Increases soul Shroud Gauge by 50. Cannot be executed under the effect of Bloodstorm Circle. Consumes all stacks of Immortal Sacrifice upon execution. And Communio, which deals unexpected damage to target and all enemies within nearby it with a potency of 1,000 for the first enemy and 60% less for all remaining enemies. In Shrouded Effect, expires upon execution and requires at least one stack of a Lemur Shroud to execute. Ooh. I'm going to have to play this job myself. I feel like there's going to be a lot of people incredibly confused on launch day because uh, this is a lot. But I feel like once I play it, I'll understand. Like once I get a feel for it, I will I will understand, you know. But it is it is a lot. Two charges of soul scythe and soul scythe. Yeah, it is a lot. Slice into waxing slice into infernal slice, spinning scythe into nightmare scythe. The gauges all look really cool, though. But I'm excited to play it. I just, I feel like they're throwing a lot of words at me that mean nothing yet because I haven't played it, you know? So maybe with a little bit more time, I'll be able to figure it out. Next up is Archer. Archer also getting a little bit of a nerf right away, but duration changed from 10 seconds to 30 seconds with Heavy Shot, giving you a lot longer window to be able to mess with that. Then we have uh, potency change from Raging Strikes to up to 15%, which is nice, but... Recast increased to 120. It'll line up more with stuff on that two-minute rotation. It's just unfortunate that you have to give up some of it for that. Because you won't get to use it near as much. Uh, Venomous Bite, potency for damage over time, changed from 30 to 15. Duration changed from 30 to 45 seconds. So less damage, but you get it for longer. So it will line up again a little bit better. Uh, Blood Letter, potency dropped, but you get three charges now, which is pretty nice. Uh, quick Knock, potency changed from 150 to 110. Uh, but now it has a 35% chance of becoming Shadow Bite, so that's nice. Uh, Wind Bite, potency's been dropped, but duration's been increased. Mage's Ballad, it's now an ability. Uh, okay, instead of 40% chance to grant Repertoire, it's now 80% chance to grant Repertoire. Uh, repertoire Effects changed from resets the recast time of Blood Letter to shortens the recast time of Blood Letter and rate of death by 7.5 seconds, which is very good. It might as well be, right? At that point, blood letter is 15. Okay, so it still would be seven seconds. Um, just about. You're not going to get to spam it. Duration change from 30 seconds to 45 seconds. We now get Mage's Coda, which to damage increase effect now also applies to the bard who cast it. That's really nice. And uh, instead of she doesn't share a recast timer, uh, now its recast timer has been changed to 120 seconds. Interesting. I like it. I like it. Barrage increases the potency of Shadow Bite to 270, and Straight Shot Ready has been changed from 10 seconds to 30 seconds, and the recast time has been changed from 80 to 120 seconds again, trying to line up with everything. <clears throat> and then we have pretty much the same stuff with Army's Payon, from 40 to 80, 45 seconds. Now you have Army's Coda, direct hit effect now also applies to the Bard who cast it, which is very nice. Reign of Death now has three charges, but the potency is only 100. And we have Battle Voice, which duration changed from 20 to 15. Recast timer changed from 180 to 120. And it now also applies to the Bard, which is great. These are very good changes for Bard. <clears throat> Wanderer's Minuet's pretty much the same way. It's now 80, 45 seconds. Wanderer's Coda, critical hit effects now also affect the Bard, but it's every 120 seconds instead of every 80. Pitch Perfect delivers an attack. Uh... With potencies now 250 to 220, 450 to 360, but the recast time has been dropped to one second, which is good, because you're going to be using that when your Wanderer's Minuet is up, so it's going to do a little bit less damage, but you're going to be able to use it immediately. Uh, Imperial Arrow, potency has been dropped a little bit. 
but again, you're going to be getting all the effects of your songs too. So it makes sense that your potency is be a little bit different. Uh, Straight Shot Ready has been changed to 30 seconds from 10. Uh, Sidewander has been completely changed. It's now a 30 or 300 potency uh, instant attack every 60 seconds. Uh, Troubadour recast time has been dropped to 90 seconds from 120, which is interesting. Uh, Caustic Bite potency has been dropped, but the duration has been increased. And Straight Shot Ready has been increased. Storm Bite potency has been decreased. Straight Shot Ready has been increased. Refulgent Arrow uh, potency has been dropped from 340 to 280. Shadow Bite uh, it's now a weapon skill. Uh, potency of 170 to target all enemies nearby it with a barrage potency of 270. And recast time has been dropped from 60 seconds to 2.5 seconds. We have Burst Shot. Uh, duration changed from 10 seconds to 30 seconds. And the range is uh, 250 to 220. So no damage changes, but the range has been dropped a little bit. No, I think that is a potency change, and they meant to say potency. Because up here it says 220 now instead of 250. I don't know. Hmm. Apex Arrow, maximum potency change from 120 to 600 to 100 to 500. So it's still a bit of a drop. Uh, but it grants blast arrow ready upon execution while soul voice gauge is 80 or higher for duration of 10 seconds. And your new abilities are Laddin's Bite, uh, which delivers an attack with a potency of 130 to all enemies that come before you with a 35% chance of becoming Shadow Bite ready for 30 seconds. Blast Arrow, which is 600 potency in a straight line uh, and 60% less for everybody else. And Radiant Finale, which increases damage dealt by self and nearby party members for 15 seconds. Effectiveness is determined by the number of different coda active in the song gauge. One coda is two, two coda is four, and three coda is 6%. And you can only use it when you have at least one coda active. And that'll be with the new songs, right? Where you get the codas. Uh, no trait changes for ranged, but ranged physical. But heavy shot duration has been increased to 30 seconds, like we said. Quick knock, uh, you now get it at 72 instead of 74. Enhanced quick knock. Uh, bite Mastery, duration changed from 10 to 30, like we said. Quick Knock Mastery and upgrades Quick Knock to Legend's Bite. Uh, Blood Letter, you get a third charge. Uh, then Blast Arrow upon executing Apex Arrow, which is very cool. Uh, Troubadour, reduces Troubadour from to 90 seconds. And then you get your Codas uh, when you use the Minstrel's Coda. Mage's Coda, Army's Coda, Wonder's Coda, with Mage's Battle and Army Pay on our Wander's Minuet. Uh, very cool. And then the Codas will be right here. Okay, I like it. I'm pretty excited for Bard. I think it's gonna be uh I think it's gonna be a lot of fun to play with these new changes at 90. I like it. Machinist is next. And Machinist is a class that I play a lot of. We have right away again, potency's dropping. We've seen that everywhere else. We know what to expect here. Reassemble now has two charges, which is great. Critical direct hit. Uh Goss Round, all of these all these potencies drop. Uh just as you would expect. That's that's normal at this point, as we've seen the squish. Everything seems to be getting potency drops across the board. So it is what it is. Uh, tactician's recast time has been dropped to 90 seconds, which is interesting. Drills down to 550. Uh, 550 from 700. At least you still get direct hit crits. It, it could be worse. Uh, heated slug slot goes up, but combo potency goes down, as as is the, the standard. Flamethrower's gone down. File Blaster's gone down. Air Anchor's gone down to 550. The Queen Overdrive's gone down to 650. The Arm Punch is down to 120. The Roller Dash is down to 240. The Pile Bunker's down to 650. And then we get some new stuff. So there's really no changes other than loss of damage. Uh, Scatter Gun delivers an attack with a potency of 150 to all enemies in a cone before you. Additional effect increases the heat gauge by 10. Uh, that looks, it's the shotgun. It looks really cool. Crowned Collider delivers an attack with a potency of 750. Potency increases as battery gauge exceeds required cost at time of deployment. The automaton queen shuts down after execution. If the action is not used manually, it will be triggered automatically before shutting down. Uh, that's a really cool looking ability too. We saw it in the job action trailer. And then Chainsaw delivers an attack to all enemies in a straight line before you with a potency of 550 for the first enemy, 65% less for all remaining enemies, and increases your battery gauge by 20. AoE battery! <coughs> so happy about that. Those are the big things for me. Like all the potency changes, sure, kind of a pain, but so cool that you get AoE battery now and you get new stuff. It's going to be great. It's going to be great. I'm excited for Machinist, for sure. I'm looking forward to it. Next up is Dancer. Dancer, I'm expecting... Yep, <laughs> I'm expecting it here, too. Uh, drops in potency all across the board, but 
uh, flourishing symmetry uh, now has duration change from 20 to 30 seconds uh, from flourishing cascade to flourishing symmetry. Fountain will be the same way. Flourishing fountain to flourishing flow. Drop in potency. Flourishing windmill to flourishing symmetry. Uh, but it also action changes to imboit. Imboit. Boite. While dancing. We'll see. Uh, standard step is the same, but standard finish has changed. Zero step potency is now uh, 360 instead. One step potency is 540. And three step potency is 720. So pretty drastic nerfs, but realistically, Dancer did a lot of damage with standard finish. Uh, kind of a shame, but I get it. Uh, down to 240 on reverse cascade. Blade shower down to 140. Band dance. Uh, didn't get a potency change, actually. Uh, but the duration has been increased instead, and it's been changed to threefold fan dance for the status update. Uh, Rising windmill down to 140. Uh, but action changes to jet. Jete while dancing. Uh, fountain fall down to 300. Blood shower down to 180, but changes to pirouette. Fan dance 2. Uh, pretty much the same way, 30 seconds. Shield Samba down to 90 seconds, just like the other two. Closed partition, uh, or closed position partition, man. It lets you designate a dance partner, right? Um, change to allowing you to share the effects of standard finish during Waltz Devilments and Tilana with said party member. Uh, Devilment added additional effect grants flourishing Starfall, duration 20 seconds. Technical finish also got a change. Uh, zero steps is now 350 from 500. One step is 540. Two steps is 720. Three steps is 900. And four steps is 1080. Again, pretty big potency changes, pretty big drops, but I feel like it's going to make up for it somewhere. Uh, flourish. <coughs> change from Flourishing Cascade, Flourishing Fountain, Flourishing Windmill, Flourishing Shower, Flourishing Fan Dance to Flourishing Symmetry, Flourishing Flow, Threefold Fan Dance, Fourfold Fan Dance, and can only be executed in combat. Saber Dance has been dropped to 480. Improvisation, uh, the area range has been changed to 8 from 6. And now you dance uh, to the beat of your own drum, as it says. Uh, your stack increases every 3 seconds up to a maximum of 4. Healing over time for self and nearby party members with a cure potency of 150 seconds. The effect ends upon using another action or moving. Interesting. Uh, new, we have Improvised Finish which creates a barrier around self and all nearby party members. Damage absorbed increases with stacks of rising rhythm. Uh, zero stacks is 5%, one stack is 6%, two stacks 7%, three stacks 8%, four stacks 10% of maximum HP, and the duration is 30 seconds. Uh, Talana delivers an attack to all nearby enemies with a potency of 360 for the first enemy, 50% less for all remaining enemies. It grants standard finish and esprit to self and party member designated your dance partner. Uh, when you finish the standard finish with it, it increases damage dealt by 5% for 60 seconds. It can only be executed under the effect of flourishing finish. Triggers the cooldown of weapon skills, step actions, finish actions upon execution. Cannot be executed during the cooldown of weapon skills, skill, uh, step actions, or finish actions. Interesting. Fan Dance 4. Deliver an attack to all enemies in a comb before you with a potency of 300 uh, with a 50% fall off. And Starfall Dance delivers a critical direct hit to all enemies in a straight line before you with a potency of 600 for the first enemy and 75% less for all remaining, but can only be executed while under the effect of Flourishing Starfall. Step Ashens, uh, we still have Imboit, Intrachat, Jete, and Pirouette. And then our traits, Esprit, has been completely changed. It grants Esprit to self and nearby party members upon successfully executing Sander Finish or Technical Finish. Esprit effect increases the Esprit gauge by 5 upon successfully landing Cascade, Reverse Cascade, Fountain, Fountain Fall, Windmill, Rising Windmill, Blade Shower, or Blood Shower when party members execute a weapon skill or cast a spell has a chance of increasing Esprit gauge by 10. And chance of triggering party member effect differs according to job. Interesting. Uh, flourishing finish comes after technical finish now for duration of 30 seconds, which is very cool. Uh, Isper gauge by 10 upon landing reverse cascade, fountain fall, rising one more blood shower. Uh, fourfold fan dance upon flourish for 30 seconds. I'm going to sneeze. Reduce the shield somber recast time to 90, of course, and flourishing starfall upon executing devilment. So we have Cascade into Fountain, but there's a 50% chance of getting Reverse Cascade, Rising Windmill, or 50% chance of Reverse Cascade. Windmill can also get Rising Windmill, Blood Shower can get Blood Shower, Blade Shower can get Blood Shower, and Fountain can get Fountain Fall. Very cool. Dancer still looks really fun. The, uh, the nerfs are interesting, but I think it'll pay off with the new moves and the heals that it has and the damage that those have. Because Direct Hit, Crit, uh... Starfall Dance is going to be very, very strong. 
And to that, we have our casters. We have Black Mage. Uh, fire. Duration changed from 18 to 30 seconds for Astral Fire. Uh, no, I'm sorry. That's for the 40% chance that the next Fire 3 will no longer have a cast time. So 30 seconds. That's pretty good. Thunder. Uh, potency has been dropped. Duration of damage over time has been increased. And uh, the Thunder spell effect duration is now 40 seconds. Blizzard 2. Instead of deals ice damage to all nearby enemies, it deals target damage to target and all enemies are nearby it, which is much better. Blizzard 2 will actually be useful in some ways now. Uh, range has been changed to 25. Potency has been increased. And cast time has been changed to 3 seconds instead. Fire 2 got a potency buff. And added Astro Fire uh, grants enhanced flare effect if cancel is... Can oh, words. It's been like an hour and a half, two hours almost. Grants enhanced flare effect is canceled if Astro Flare... Fire ends. <laughs> Words. Thunder 2, potency changes. Increase. Damage over time, increased. Uh, Thunder 2 is going to be better now, by far. Uh, Monofont, there's a fly in here now. Monofont uh, restores... Or, I'm sorry, the recast time has been changed from 180 to 120. Fire 3, learning level has been changed to 35. Blizzard 3, uh, it's been changed to 35. Freeze has been changed to level 40, and the potency has been increased to 120. Cast time has been increased a little bit and can only be executed while under the effect of Umbral Ice. Under 3, potency has been dropped a little bit. Duration has been increased. Flare, potency has been dropped a little bit, uh, but it added enhanced flare potency to 20, or to 80. Sorry, I can't read, apparently. Uh, no longer removes Umbral Ice, but now can only be executed while under the effect of Astral Fire, which is interesting. Uh, ley Lines, recast time has been changed from 90 seconds to 120 seconds. Two-minute Ley Lines. Uh, Sharpcast now has the Paradox effect. Two charges and 30 seconds. It ensures the next Scathe, Fire, Paradox, or Thunder spell uh, will trigger the additional effect. Blizzard 4, execution requirement changed from both Enochian and Umbral Ice to only Umbral Ice because Enochian is going to be a trait now. Fire 4 will probably be the same way. Yep. Thunder 4, uh, potency has been reduced. Duration has been increased. Triple cast uh, now has two charges, which is amazing. Foul got a nerf. I didn't expect that, actually. Uh, and it got a big nerf in the drop-off. It's now from 25% to 60%. Uh, but cast time changed from 2.5 seconds to instant, which is nice. Uh, despair, potency has been dropped to 340. And execution requirement changed from both Anoki and Astral Fire to only Astral Fire. Umbral Soul changed from both Anoki and Umbral Ice to only Umbral Ice. Xenoglossy got a nerf. Wow. Black Mage got some, some serious nerfs here. Ley Lines being two minutes is one of the big ones, too. But not having to keep up a Nokia, and it's going to balance things out a lot. Uh, high Fire 2 deals fire damage with potency of 140 to target all in the region nearby. It grants S for Fire 3 and removes Umbral Ice uh, for 15 seconds and grants Enhanced Flare Effect. It's canceled if Astral Fire ends. High Blizzard 2, which I assume is saying it grants Enhanced Flare Effect, but that's also canceled if Astral Fire ends. High Blizzard 2. Uh, which uh, potency of 140 to target and all enemies to buy it, grants Umbral Ice 3, removes Astral Fire. Amplifier, which grants Polyglot, uh, can only be executed under the effect of Astral Fire or Umbral Ice. And then Paradox, deals unexpected damage with a potency of 500. Astral Fire bonus refreshes the duration of Astral Fire and 40% chance to grant Fire Starter for 15 seconds. Next Fire 3 will require no time to cast and cost no MP for 30 seconds, which is very nice. Umbral Ice bonus, spell is cast immediately, requires no MP to cast, and refreshes the duration of Umbral Ice for 15 seconds. Paradox is going to be a really interesting spell to play around with. You know? You're going to be able to do some really cool stuff with that. Uh, we got some changes to Addle, which makes it where uh, lowers targets physical damage dealt by 5%, magic damage dealt by 10%. Because you got to figure out which one you want to use. You know? That's really interesting. Uh, sleep is back. Put targets to sleep. Lucid Dreaming, of course, we talked about earlier. Aspect Mastery, uh, you now get it 1, which uh, gives you Astral Fire and Umbral Ice at level 1, which is very cool. Uh, then uh, increases base action damage, and that's yeah, just normal main and mend. Allows the stacking of Astral Fire and Umbral Ice. Uh, that's what used to be there, but instead now it's on Aspect Mastery 2. And then we have Thundercloud, 40 seconds. Very nice. Fire Starter to 30 seconds. Enochian has a trait now that you get at 56. Increase your damage dealt by 5% while under the effect for Astral Fire or Umbral Ice. And uh, you can get the Enhanced Flare. Uh, but Enhanced Flare effect is lost if Astral Fire is lost. Uh, you get three Umbral Hearts when casting Freeze with updated Freeze. Enhanced Foul allows for the immediate casting of Foul. 
Uh, then we get upgrading Fire 2 and Blizzard 2 to High Fire 2 and High Blizzard 2. Monofont to 120. Okian's Magic Damage to 20%, which is very, very good. And then we get Paradox as well and Sharp Cast Charges. So it's looking great. I am I am loving this. Black Mage is going to be really fun to play around with in uh, Endwalker, for sure. Summoner. This is basically a new job, so everything's different. Ruin got a buff. That's nice. Cast time dropped. MP cost reduced. No MP cost increased. Sorry, read that wrong. Been doing this for a while now today. Uh, you now have Summon Carbuncle, which you get level two. Uh, Radiant Aegis orders Carbuncle to execute Radiant Aegis. It's a barrier around stuff that absorbs damage totaling 20% of your maximum HP. Two charges for a duration of 30 seconds. Ether Charge grants Ether Charge, increases the potency of Ruin, Ruin 2, Ruin 3 by 50, and Outburst by 20, duration of 15 seconds. Grants Ruby Arcanum, Topaz Arcanum, and Emerald Arcanum. Uh, can only be executed in combat while Carbuncle is summoned. Uh, Ruby Carbuncle orders it to execute Glittering Ruby. Uh, Glittering Ruby rushes target and deals fire damage with a potency of 400. Grants two stacks of fire attunement. Gem Shine and Precious Brilliance become fire aspected for 30 seconds. A lot going on here. Uh, Gem Shine channels the energies of your active elemental attunement to attack your enemy. Fire damage, of course. <coughs> Earth damage and wind damage. Ruby Ruin deals fire damage with a potency of 300. Uh, I'm assuming that replaces regular Ruin because it can't be a time to a task. Hot Bar. I can't read anymore. We've been going for so long. We're almost done. Fester. Uh, you get it at 10 now. Potency changed to 300. And now it has a recast time of 1. It's just potency of 300. No longer dots. dots don't, you don't have dots anymore. Uh, energy Drain. Uh, level 10, potency of 200, grants further ruin for 60 seconds, shares a recast timer with Energy Siphon. Still have Resurrection, though. That's nice. Summon Topaz, executes Glittering Topaz, versus target steals Earth damage the exact same way. Gem Shine, Precious Brilliance become Earth Aspected. Topaz Ruin, the exact same way. I think it's the same damage as Ruby Ruin. No, Ruby Ruin's more damage. How would you use? I guess because you already have the Topaz. I don't know. And then Emerald as well for Glittering Emerald. Wind damage, potency of 400. Uh, Emerald Ruin. Wait, what are the recast times? Okay, Topaz Ruin has a longer recast time. Emerald Ruin has a 160 recast time. Does a lot of, or a little, very little damage. 2.5 for 300. 2.8 cast time. Topaz Ruin's instant with 2.5 seconds. Okay. So there are reasons to play around with them then. Outburst. You now get as an Arcanist. You learn it at 26. Potency's gone up a little bit. Cast times come down a little bit. MP costs come down a little bit. Precious Brilliance. Channel the energies of your active elemental attunement to attack multiple enemies. Fire damage to a target and all enemies nearby. And earth damage, wind damage. Ruby outburst. Ruby version of outburst. Topaz outburst. Emerald outburst. Ruin 2. Uh, you get at level 30 now. Does 270 damage. 1.5 recast. An MP cost of 300. Summon Ifrit. Summon Ifrit Eggy in order to execute Inferno. Rushes forward and deals fire damage to all enemies of 5 Yon Comb. Uh, cone before it with a potency of 600 for the first enemy, 60% less for all remaining enemies. Two sacks of fire attunement, as you would expect. Also grants Ifrit's favor, uh, which seems pretty cool. Uh, effective Ifrit favor ends upon activation, execution of certain summoner actions. Uh, you need either Ruby Arcanum or Carbuncle summoned. Very cool. Ruby Ruin 2, uh, 340. Uh, Topaz Ruin 2, Emerald Ruin 2. Summon Titan, same way. He uses Earth and Fury. Uh... Potency of 600 for the first enemy, 60% less for all remaining enemies. Uh, Pain Flare, uh, you now do 150 potency with it, get it at level 40 instead, and its recast time has changed to one second. I'm a Garuda, she does Aerial Blast, uh, which also is 600 with 60% less and gives Garuda's favor. Then we have Energy Siphon, which is 52 instead of 35, 100 potency, grants further ruin, 60 second recast. Ruin 3, 310 potency, 1.5 recast, MP cost changed to 300. Ruby Ruin 3, Topaz Ruin 3, Emerald Ruin 3, Dreadworm Trance, which is a uh, changed category for mobility to spell. It now has a 15% 15, 15 second duration. <coughs> Ruin 3 to Astral Impulse, Outburst to Astral Flare, uh, Grants Ruby Arcanum, Topaz Arcanum, and Emerald Arcanum. Um, yeah, man, I'm, I'm starting to struggle here, but we got this. Unexpected damage with a potency of 430. Uh, for Astral Impulse, Astral Flare is 180 and it's an AoE. Astral Flow channels the energy active trance uh, to give you Death Flare for Dreadworm Trance, Rekindle for Firebird Trance, 
uh, Crimson Cyclone for Ifrit's favor, Mountain Buster for Titan's favor, and Slipstream for Garuda's favor. Death Flare is 500 potency, uh, with a drop off is now 60%, recast times 20 seconds, uh, but no longer drops Dreadborn Trance upon execution. Uh, cannot be assigned to a hotbar. <clears throat> Ruin 4 is 430 potency to the first enemy, AoE with 60% drop off. Uh, MP cost has been changed from 200 to 400, and the range has been changed from 0 to 5. Searing Light orders the Carbuncle to execute Searing Light. Searing Light effect increases damage dealt by self and nearby party members by 3% for 30 seconds. Seems very good. Summon Bahamut has changed. Duration has been changed from 20 to 15 seconds. Recast time from 30 to 60 seconds. Range from 0 to 25. Uh, seems really cool. Changes Ruin 3 to Astral Impulse and Tri Disaster to Astral Flare. Wormwave hasn't changed. And Kindle Bahamut, potency changed to 1300. All right. Okay. Uh, potency rate when attacking enemies changed from 50% to 60% drop off. And uh, recast timer changed from 10 seconds to 20 seconds. Akmorn is 1300. Still has the drop off changed to 60. Ruby Wright, which is 430 for a fire attunement. Topaz Wright, 330 for a Titan's attunement, uh, but grants Titan's favor. Emerald Wright for 230 for a wind attunement cost. Tri Disaster, 120 damage is back. Ruby Tri Disaster. Topaz Tri Disaster, or Topaz Disaster, Ruby Disaster, Emerald Disaster. Fountain of Fire is 250 to 430 now. And uh, MP cost is 400 to 300 instead, but now you get a level 80. And Brand of Purgatory is potency from 350 to 180, but no longer has drop off. A lot going on here. Uh, Summon Phoenix is now its own button that you get at 80. Uh, which enters the Fireburn Trance and summons Demi Phoenix. Fight by your side. Works exactly the same way. Everlasting Flight. Gradually, it hasn't changed. Rekindle. Restores own target. Roan or target party member's HP for 400. Grants Rekindle to target. Healing over time when HP falls below 75% for a cure potency of 200 for 15 seconds. We have Inkindle Phoenix, which is potency of 650 to 1300. Drop-off's been moved up to 60%. Recast time's 20 seconds. Then we have Revelation, which is 1300, exactly the same as Bahamut. Then we have Ruby Catastrophe, which is Fire uh, Attunement 1. Topaz Catastrophe, which is Earth Attunement 1. And Emerald Capac uh, Catastrophe, which is Wind Attunement 1. Crimson Cyclone, which is 430 with a 65% drop-off. Uh, only be executed while you have Ifrit Favor. Crimson Strike, 430 with the... Uh, it combos on Crimson Cyclone with a drop-off. And only when you're comboing with that. Mountain Buster, which is 150 with a 70% drop off, which combos into nothing, does it? Doesn't seem like it. Slipstream, which is 430 for the first enemy and 65% less with a drop off, and creates a wind stream for a potency of 30 seconds for a duration of 15 seconds. Summon Ifrit 2, which summons Ruby Ifrit and orders it to increase Inferno, which is 700. And 60% drop off. Two stacks of fire attunement, otherwise the same. Same with Titan 2 and same with Garuda 2. And we've deleted Bio, Summon, Miasma, Eggy Assault, Summon 2, Bio 2, Bane, Summon 3, Eggy Assault 2, Enkindle, Tri Disaster, Ether Pack, Devotion, Bio 3, Miasma 3, and Firebird Trance. We also have Radiant Aegis, which creates a barrier around you that absorbs damage totaling 20% of your maximum HP for 30 seconds. And Searing Light, which increases damage dealt by self and nearby party members by 3% for 30 seconds. Oh, Summoner is very different, and I don't fully understand it, but I like it. Here's your new gauges. I like it a lot. I'm very excited to play around with it. And then finally, we have Red Mage. Repost. It's black and white mana gauge cost from 30 to 20. Good. Uh, some potency drops. Black and white mana cost change from 3 to 2. Some more potency drops, 11 to 6. Uh, Cora Cora now has two charges and recast times 35 seconds. Arrow, uh, white mana has been dropped to 6. Scatter now has added acceleration potency 170, which is nice. For Thunder 2, potency has been increased a little bit. For Arrow 2, potency has been increased a little bit. Uh, for Fire, stuff and mana costs have been pulled down and uh, potency has been increased. Black and white mana gauge costs from 25 to 15. Again, these are, these are pretty good here. Maximum charges two. Engagement. Fletcher got a damage buff, which is great because that's a thing you use all the time. 
Redoublement, the the mana cost had gone down. Acceleration now has two charges. Contra six day has a little bit of a nerf, but that's okay because it's still very good. Uh, Embolden no longer uh, has the the reduction of the effect. It's just a straight buff now. Uh, Manification increases both black and white mana by 50%. Then we have the six stacks of Manification. Increases magic damage dealt by 5%. Then we have the duration of 15 seconds. All combos are canceled upon execution of Manification. Jolt 2, which increases some more damage. Uh, not too bad. And the uh, mana costs go down. Impact, 220 to 210. Acceleration potency of 260. Verflare has been completely changed. Fire damage, 580, 60% drop off. Increases black mana by 11. 20% chance of becoming for fire ready. Uh, chance of becoming for fire ready increases to 100% if white mana is higher than black mana, of course. Uh, mana stat cost is 3. For holy, the exact same way, but with black mana. Scorch, uh, completely revamped, 680 with the same drop off, uh, combos off of for flare or for holy, uh, and increases both black mana and white mana by four. Jolt two and impact are changed to scorch upon landing for flare for holy as a combo action. For thunder three, deals lightning damage with a potency of 380. This is a new ability, increases black mana by six, and a 50% chance of becoming for fire ready. For arrow three, uh, deals wind potency, wind damage with a potency of 380, white mana by six. Magic Barrier reduces magic damage taken by self and nearby party members by 10% while increasing HP recovered and healing actions, or by healing actions, by 5% for 10 seconds. Resolution deals unexpected damage to all enemies in a straight line before you with a potency of 750 for the first enemy and 60% less for all remaining enemies. Uh, combos off of Scorch. That ability looks really cool. Scorch is changing resolution upon landing Scorch to combo action. Then we have Enhanced Repost. Uh, grants a mana stack. And change black and white balance uh, to from 30 to 20. Uh, for Chow, gains a mana stack. And Doublement, Redoublement, gains a mana stack. Molinet gains a mana stack. And Reprise has its potency added a little bit and recast time increased a little bit. It just seems like Red Mage is going to be better and better. It's going to be easier for it to use its best stuff more often, which is very good. Let me know your thoughts on these job changes in the comment section down below. And uh, until next time, I've been Trey. This has been the Full Spectrum. Remember to always enjoy the Full Spectrum that uh, Final Fantasy XIV Endwalker has to offer.